Today in the bunker, we're going to make an anomaly for the zone. For this project, the one I specifically used was the one of the mushrooms from the Shrieking Fungi pack from the Reaper Bones Black series. And I found that these Reaper minis are, and also some of the WizKid stuff, is brilliant for monsters and beasts that you can encounter, or plants, um, out in the zone. And these are generally, you know, four or five bucks, you get several minis in them, so uh, you can do a lot of neat things. Like this one, I only used one of them out of the pack, so I can make a couple of others that are different. This one appealed to me because it shots, you know, it looks like it might shoot spores out if you get too close. So it's kind of an area effect. But uh, I highly recommend these. If you're doing this in 20 or 28, these work great. And they're not expensive. And they're, they're really nice sculpts. All right, so I just cut a circle. Um, it's, it's vaguely round. Um, out of a piece of drink carton. And I'm going to glue the non-slick side down with some super glue. I think that'll adhere a little better. Um, and we'll, we'll do something to the top to make it suitable. It doesn't, it's not going to be slick. But uh, we'll vaguely mark the center and then we'll cut out and we'll make like a, like a broken concrete effect so that we can put our giant mushroom right there in the middle of it. So let's get set about that task. All right, so I've marked the center, or vaguely the center. And I'm just going to make a dotted line to sort of delineate a clearing. And I'll come in a little further than that, actually. There we go. We want just enough room for that base and then that, that can peel back. So let's cut that out. Be sure to tighten your knife. Nothing worse than a loose knife. And take your time. Don't cut yourself. Trying to stop the cut before the knife gets turned back around or it's coming back at my hand. Because if that slips off, it'll fly right into your finger and won't that be great. Alright, so there's that. That fits just about perfect. And then we'll mark some striations or whatever you want to call them. And so that we can kind of make that sort of eruption looking concrete thing going on there. And we'll cut those so that they're like flanges basically. Not phalanges. This is not some sort of neo-fascist political movement. And I'm reminded they're also not little finger parts. So we will kind of bend these back a little bit. I have no idea if this is actually even going to work, but we'll try it. We'll see what happens. It's probably a way better way to do it. It occurs to me that probably the edges of these flanges should be jagged. So we'll try and add some little damage to them. Oh, 
All right, I'm going to fiddle with that and we'll be right back. All right, so we're just going to apply our usual PVA around here. And we'll use one of our older brushes out of our pile of brushes that is well suited to this sort of task. Maybe if I put this in the camera shot, that might be helpful. Um, so this is more of the same basic <laughs> basing techniques, what I did there, did you see it? That I always use. So if you've been following along, this will seem really familiar. All right, so we've got that on there. Let's not glue our piece to anything before we're ready. And we'll just take some of our sand mix. We'll pour that on there. And one of the reasons I do it on the plate is so I can easily recover it. Any excess. So you don't have to be shy about putting it on there. It can knock any of the bigger hunks off. All right, so we'll let that dry for a little bit and then we'll put the top on. All right, as that was drying, I would test fit the top piece and ended up scraping around it so that this would actually lie flat on the base because it was I had a bunch of sand underneath it so just make sure your fit is good all right so we'll what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to prime this before I glue this on because getting down on that sand is going to be a pain so we'll be right back since I'm too lazy to go outside and spray paint this, uh, I went ahead and painted one side of this with a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. And we're gonna let that dry a little bit more. It dries pretty quick, and then we'll paint the other side. And for around the base of this, we're gonna use some burnt umber. And what I'm gonna do is add that to, I'm gonna thin that out a little bit. And then we will add it to some magic wash. And that'll help it flow down in on that sand. Okay, so we'll let that dry and we'll prime the other side of that and we'll get ready to put that whole thing together. All right, so I've applied a second coat of the burnt umber to the ground and our initial coat of paint, or initial color rather, on um, this fungus, I mixed half and half of the burnt umber and some white and I'm going to bring that up to a whiter color, but it'll have a very earthy tone to it, if you know what I mean. And then the, the gills around here will be kind of a gray color. And then the top's going to be red with white. But I wanted to paint at least the bottom parts before I try to put this all together. Just to make it easier to, to get to all the pieces. And it occurs to me too that um, my original plan, I was going to use... The ground texture and try to blend that in but I may have to use some spackle to sort of blend in those edges on that top piece because I cut it a little small but that's fine we'll make it work so for the ground highlight I want the ground to be to look sort of damp so I am only going to apply a highlight of the nutmeg brown and I'm not going to do the maple sugar tan on top of that because that gives it a bit of a dry look. 
So we'll just put a little bit of this on here and we'll just kind of overbrush that on there. And that gives it a nice earthy color without looking like it's dried out too much. Okay, and for our concrete top, I'm going to go ahead and sort of put a primer coat on this of pewter gray. We'll get as many of the painting steps out of the way as we can before we actually try to assemble it. And some of this I'll have to redo because like I said, I'm going to blend the edges, but or attempt to. We'll see how that works. get some inside that lip. All right, so we'll let that dry and see what we get. Okay, so as I've progressed, um, I built up the white color using one of my old Vallejo game color things that the label wore off of. Anyway, it's a very stark white. Um, I put that over the kind of tan color that was on there. And I'm going to put a uh, brown wash over that in a bit. The gills I based with, I believe this is German black gray, German camo gray. It's another one of my really old colors. That's why I like Vallejo's. This bottle of paint is at least 10 years old because I didn't paint for almost 10 years. So um, it's, it may be a little older than that and it's still going. This one I had to resurrect from the dead a little bit. There were some chunky bits in it once I dug those out and got it going. Some of my older colors, I'll, I'll make mention of this. You'll note I've got a little X on there. These are the ones that I've put uh, a couple of beads in and then put on my paint mixer, which is actually a nail polish mixer. I'll do a video on that later. But... Um, Using those kind of techniques, you can make this paint last a very long time. But uh, next color we're going to use is uh, game color. It's an extra opaque. This is heavy red. This is from a set that I bought from a now sadly defunct game store that was run by a friend of mine. So this is another set of paint that's probably 10 years old or close to it. But um, anyway... We'll put that on and see what we get. All right, there's our coat of heavy red. And we're going to let that whole thing dry for a little bit. And then we'll do a little more on it. So the gills I picked out, I still had some pewter gray on the palette. So I took my detail brush. And hopefully you can see it. I got in there and picked out those details and then put a base coat on the top of the cap for those spots that are going to be white where the spores will actually explode out of. That'll give them a little extra depth when I do put that white on there. All right, so I put some black wash on that stem part, um, especially heavy at the top and the bottom to try and blend it. Um, details are picked out with the pewter gray. I did a did do a dry brush on the soil with some orange brown. You could also use like a burnt sienna. Um, it just needed a little something. It's still not quite where I wanted it, but it'll work. Uh, each of the spore ejectors on the cap, uh, I put that pewter gray on there, and then when that was dry, I uh, mixed a little bit of that black gray with some magic wash and put that in there and let it sort of do the whole way around and inside. So once I go back and pick that out with white, it'll be a nice delineation. Um, I'm going to do some brighter red in there a little bit first on the rest of the cap. But uh, yeah, this should come together quite nicely. All right, so our base colors have all dried, uh, especially on the cap and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and try to put the concrete cover on here 
we'll glue that down and then once that's dry we'll try to blend it in and uh, paint the rest of that okay a little bit of super glue and that is in place so it shouldn't take very long before that's fairly firm so I'm gonna put something on that edge to try and blend it all right since I still have 99.9% uh, .9 of this huge mucking container of uh, flexible spackle uh, and anybody who has been following along if you watch my Adobe building series that's this is what I use for that um, I'm gonna have this for a while so I'm gonna take a bit of this and try to blend in those edges on that base so let's get just a little bit on here. And I guess the key here is to build up kind of a, a bead around that edge that I can sand down when this is dried a bit and kind of blend that whole thing in. It might be a little bit fiddly, but and that should do it. So we'll blend that in as best we can. We'll wait for that to dry and then we'll sand it and see what we get. While we're waiting for that outside to dry, I went ahead and started touching up the rest of the mushroom. I used some model color flat red to kind of brighten up that cap a little bit. And then I'm going to pick out the spore details with some of that bone white, I guess. I'm not sure what that was. But anyway, we'll get our detail brush and go to work. All right, so that's uh, brightened up nicely. So I think that'll, uh, that'll work well. So once that basing is dry, we'll sand that down a little bit and get that portion painted. Let that dry and we've sanded that down so it's nice and smooth and gave a good transition. So we'll put um, some pewter gray on there as a base color. Try to be careful not to get it up onto the earth that's inside there, which I have a bad tendency to be a little sloppy. So I also got to avoid getting it onto the actual mushroom itself since I went ahead and painted all that. I'd like to not redo it. Just put a nice coat on there and kind of blend it all together. And, you know, take care to cover up all of these colored bits since concrete generally doesn't have bright red or tan bits sticking out of it. All right, so we'll let that dry for a bit and we'll put some more color on. All right, so we're gonna use an old brush and we're gonna stipple on some of that Quaker gray. And we'll just kind of build up a little bit of color on there, a little highlights. Okay, and while we're doing that, we're also going to 
do a little bit of dry brushing on these edges. Again, being careful not to get down onto that earth that's inside there. Although it wouldn't be the end of the world if you did, but better to avoid it. And we just want to help accentuate the sort of jagged edges on here. off and then we'll get a brush and cover up this one spot that doesn't seem to want to cover up not sure what I did there but sometimes you'll find places where the paint just doesn't want to stick just have to keep on it Alright, so let's get some tan. And we do our same stippling. One spot. It's got one job. Doesn't want to do it. There we go. All right, and that blends pretty well with our other anomaly bases. So the last thing we need to do. Well, the last thing would be to paint the rim. I'm going to, I think, add some little cracks to this. So we'll use some of this gray black and our detail brush. draw ourselves some cracks coming off. And this is one of those places where less is definitely more. You don't want to overdo this step. And it's completely optional. You could leave it off and it would it would look just fine. But I think it really helps kind of sell the idea that this sort of cracked out of the the concrete. And the nice thing about using these Reaper minis is this works for 20 millimeter it'll work for 28 it's not as epically huge but it's still pretty giant I mean that's like almost the size of a person even in 28 millimeters so uh, dual use terrain is always good for those of us who do multiple scales I think we're going to add one last little highlight along those cracks. You 
kind of kind of reinforce that illusion that there's a crack there. And again, really easy to overdo it. And that'll dry a tad darker, so it won't be quite as bright. You don't want it to really pop too much. I think a lot of times you're better off just with a almost a suggestion of something than rather trying to sort of blatantly paint the whole thing. All right, so we'll paint that edge once everything else is dry and uh, should be good to go. So we thinned out some black paint and we'll just neaten up that edge. And you could do it in any number of colors. Um, I had considered doing a special color for anomalies, but, and I may go back to that and add orange or green or whatever. But I think the anomalies probably have enough visual appeal on their own that you'll be able to look at them and say, oh yeah, that's that's something maybe weird or I don't want to encounter. And, and not having a special color on the base probably won't influence that. All right, so there it is. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that's useful. Maybe it'll inspire you to make something even better. And uh, if you want to see more of this, be sure to like and subscribe. And I appreciate you guys watching. Stay safe. And remember, the way is forward.